All right. Happy Wednesday. Last Wednesday of the month, we are going to talk about the compensation plan and really try and break that down for you to make sure that you are making the most money with your business. Okay. So if you look in our catalogs on the back page is our compensation plan. The only thing that is going to be different is on here. It says that Cincy club somewhere, someone pointed it out. It says with Cincy club that you only make 15%. That is not accurate. Um, you're going to make the 25% from Cincy club. Um, they was going, they changed that in the catalogs and then was going to roll it out. Uh, and then the pandemic happened and they haven't done that yet. They made a different change to Cincy club instead. Um, so that is the only part of this that is not accurate. So it is, it can get confusing. So I was like, I'm going to go ahead and break this down because as you guys are growing your teams, um, you know, you, we really want everybody under us to be successful. That is why we recruit. We don't recruit for ourselves, but at the end of the day, you, you're doing this to make money, right? So you need them to be really successful so that they can make money and they can, you know, get something out of this. And then, but you have to also continue to grow. So I'm going to break that down because say I am a lead, lead star, superstar, lead star or superstar consultant, right? And I have teams under me or teamies under me, obviously, because that's how you promote. Um, all of this that I'm going to say is accurate until you hit director. So if you are a star consultant and you have a teamie under you that is a lead consultant, when they get up to star, you will not get paid off of them until you promote to superstar. Same thing with lead. If you are a lead and you have a teamie under you that is a lead, you will not get paid off of that team until you reach star. You have to stay ahead of your team to get paid off of your team. So I'm going to break all of that down. So da, 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 da. let's see here. So for lead consultant, who can tell me what you need to be paid at title for lead consultant? Isn't it at least 500 for you and um, a team one needs to be active and then your Two. TBW is... Is it one? No, lead is one. You're right. You're right. You're right. One one active teamy. And I think your GWV has to be a thousand. Yep. Perfect. So your GWV and your PRV are different. Your GWV is going to be your team as a whole minus that 25% that comes out for your paycheck, right? So if you have 100 PRV, that is not. 100 GWV so that people get really, really hung up on that. Um, so you have to make sure that you understand that GWV and um, PRV are different. And then TWV is going to come into play too. And I'll explain that as we get going. Who can tell me what you need to promote to star consultant? I'll tell you because I never get paid a title. 2,500 GWV, not yet. 2,500 GWV, two active frontline and 500 of your own PRV. Okay. What about Superstar? Anyone know? 6,000 GWV, three active frontline and 500. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you need all of those to promote. And not only do you need them to promote, but you need them to be paid at title. Paid at title means that you will make that extra bonus off of your own PRV. And it also means that you will be paid off of your team. So if you are a star consultant and you don't get paid at title, that doesn't mean that you don't make money off of them, but you're gonna get paid as a lead consultant, which is less percentage, okay? So if you are a superstar consultant, but you're not paid at title, um, I dealt with that a lot. That was my hardest title was superstar consultant. Um, and I, at first, I didn't think that I was going to get paid off of my team at all if I didn't get paid at title. So I beat myself up about it, but actually I did. I only, I just only got paid as a star consultant. So I got, you get paid at rank if you aren't paid at title. Okay. So let's see. Here. But isn't so that only as long as you meet the requirements? So like 
Yes. So let's say, okay, right. So like I have to get paid so to get paid at lead rank. I'm still getting my thousand GWV and my 500, right? Yes. To get right? paid at, okay. so All if right. you're a star consultant and you're not paid at title to get paid as a lead, you still have to have your 500 in. You still have to have one active frontline and you still have to have a thousand GWV. So to get paid at that rank, otherwise you don't make that rank. So you get paid at whatever rank you reach. So like as a director, say we don't hit our numbers, but I have the numbers for a superstar consultant, then I would drop, I, I don't know how it works with the director, but I think, yeah, I would get paid like I was a superstar consultant, even though I was a director. Um, I'm going to get to it, but director is the only title that you can lose. You can become a director and it can be taken away from you. Um, that's the only title in the whole compensation plan that can be taken away from you. So I'll get to that. So now we know what each branch needs, like what, what each level needs to be paid at title. So let's say that, I'm gonna draw my little picture now. Okay, so you have you. So we're gonna write me up here in the top and I'm gonna do it as a star, as a star, cons as a star consultant, because I think it'll be easier. So a star consultant has to have two teamies. So we're gonna do teamie A, and Team e B. So Team e A and Team e B. And you have for star consultants, you have to have 2,500 GWV. So let's say with these three, all of you are rock stars. So you're getting paid at title, right? So you think, okay, I'm cool. All right. And you don't recruit anymore right away. But let's say Team e A recruits three. So now we have team e, C, D, and E. Okay. Now let's say, uh oh, she's a lead consultant now. Right? She's a lead. Now let's say this team e right here recruits one. That'll be team e F. Okay. Now they're all underneath of me. Okay. My tree. Right. But now, uh-oh, Team e A has got 2,500 GWV, so now she's a star, okay? That means I am no longer getting paid off of this branch until I reach superstar consultant, okay? Well, for superstar consultant, you have to have three. So you have to have another Team e that's active over here. I'm gonna put a question mark. You have to have this teamy, and then say this teamy, teamy B gets a teamy, okay? So now we're on G. So this teamy gets a teamy, right? So now teamy A is a team of one, two, three, four, five. Teamy A is a team of five. Teamy B is a team of two. And then this random little teamy that you just got over here that I made a question mark instead of a letter is just a team by itself. They all umbrella under here. And as long as all three of these are active, then you and you up here, now you between everybody, you hit 6,000, you'll go back in front of Team EA and you'll start getting paid off this whole branch again. Okay. But let's say Team EA then reaches superstar consultant and you're still at star. So not only did she match you, she passed you okay don't fret that means that you got to go back to the drawing board and you need to start recruiting more and you need to talk with your teamies about the perks of recruiting more right so that they can start promoting up then you'll hit your and you'll get up to superstar and then up to director so this does this make sense do you have questions before i go further about how if teamy a is the same rank as you, you don't get paid off this branch. Their numbers still count towards your numbers, but you don't get paid off of this branch until you get back in front of your teamie in rank. Does that make sense? Do we have I'm any following questions? it really well. Yeah, yeah. if sense. I can follow it, anybody can. <laughs> okay, good. I, I figured a picture would help a lot versus just being like A, B, C, and D, and then A and A, and you know what I mean? So. All right, so let me ask yeah. you a question now. Because okay. I understand, but I just have a question. Okay. So Timmy 
A passes me and becomes a superstar consultant, right? Yeah. Her numbers no longer count towards my numbers, right? Now that's where it gets to be a gray area. They won't, I think it's like, I think they still count towards your numbers. You just don't get paid off of them. Now that okay. is a really, really washy area. And truthfully, I've asked five or six um, SSDs and I've not got the straight answer. Um, maybe I, I'm truthfully, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that logically those numbers would count. They would count. You just aren't going to get paid off of them. So it doesn't matter if your GWV is 2,500 because you're not like, you're not going to get paid at title because you have to do it without team EA because you guys are the same rank. So they count to help you get promoted. So like, so she's, if, if team EA is at 2,500 GWV, which means she's a star consultant and you up here, your, her numbers don't count towards promotion now. Like, because you can't get paid off of this. But if you're going to promote to superstar consultant, now hers are going to kick back up. Does that make sense? Like her numbers do count, but not like you're not going to be paid at title if they're the same rank as you. Does that, does okay. that make sense? So then basically you can't promote then to a superstar consultant if you're, she's you're a gonna superstar have consultant. To be, With her numbers, I'm going to have to get my own you're going to have to, right? Yes. You're going to have, if she passes you, you're going to have to recruit more. And I think her numbers will still feed into yours, but you're going to have to get the active front line and you're going to have to push your way up. Does that make like her numbers count? You're just not going to get paid on them. All right. That makes sense. I was okay. going to make it really difficult, but I'll let you keep going first. Okay. Then you can make it difficult. So Example of this happening and why I, I want to tell you this, because if this happens to you, it's okay. And I hope Marcella won't be mad, but I'm going to put this into perspective. So this happened with Marcella. So Marcella was a hobbyist. I joined under her and then I, my business started rocking. So she was like, well, I want to do this too. So when I signed up, she was a star consultant. I think. Yeah whatever, star consultant. Well, then I promoted up to star really fast, but my number, so then she wasn't getting paid off of me. I never passed Marcella. I only made it to her level though. So I don't know how it would work with you passing them because I haven't personally experienced it. So I don't really know. But so I got to um, her level, but she kept recruiting, kept busting her ass, kept putting in PRV, and then she was able to get her GWV up and she was able to get up to superstar consultant. And then when she, she had a team standing without me now, I was still part of it, but we were the same rank. So she needed a team to stand without me. So she did that. So when I promoted up to superstar, my numbers and the other part of the team's numbers pushed her to director. So then my numbers pushed her. But it my your teamies under you numbers, as long as you have other teamies and you are working your business the way you should be working your business, if a teamie under you promotes, they're probably going to push you towards that next level promotion, especially when you get up into the superstar consultant range, because that's a big jump from 2,500 to 6,000. Um, like it's a really, really big jump. So you got to have multiple, like, it's going to be really hard to do that without your team branching and doing all of these numbers. Okay. <clears throat> so what is your question? And let's see. And I'm actually going to give Stephanie a call because she's super, super good at um, explaining this. So I'm going to see if I can phone a friend. I mean, they do it on TV shows. Let me see if I can get her. Just Your a second. Okay. Well, she sent me to voicemail. Um, I'm going to text her. Okay. So here's my difficult question. Okay. I'm a superstar consultant and April becomes a director before me. Her numbers no longer count then, right? 
Well, that's why I'm, I'm phoning a friend because that's a fuzzy area okay. for me because I haven't ever actually had anybody technically pass. So I'm trying to phone a friend. Um, that one didn't work. So let me try calling JC. Um, I can't promise that that's going to work. She is, it's, she's a very, very busy lady. So let me just see if I can get her to answer the phone really fast. Just a sec. Do, 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 do. Like I've got the, Hello. hey, so I'm on my team Zoom and I have a question and I wanted to put you on speaker and see if you could answer it for me. Okay. Okay, so we're going over the compensation plan. Okay. And I have figured out, you know, about the whole like pay, like if they're your rank, like the same rank as you, you don't get paid off of them. However, do their numbers still count towards your numbers to help you promote? Yes. Okay. So what if you are past? So say you're a star consultant, your teamy under you moves to superstar consultant. If you have like active frontline around them, does, those, does their numbers still push you or do they no longer count? Yes. It counts towards your numbers altogether to get, help you get to where you need to be next. But that frontline that is now an SSC, whatever her TWV is, you're just not getting paid off of. Okay. So technically, so if you have, oh, hang on. Okay. So if I have a star consultant that is now her teamy under her is a superstar consultant. So the only way her numbers wouldn't push me though, if, if we're going with their numbers count is if I don't have the active front line. Correct. Yeah. If you, if you have the active front line and the PRV. Right. So if you have your 500 in and you have your um, active front line. Star. Yeah. You're both out of that star. And, but she promotes up to superstar. How do you get back in front of her? It's a hit director. So the only way to get ahead of the superstar. Oh, goodness. To get it's ahead of rank her. above her. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, her. If you, rank, if you rank next to her and you're, you become a superstar, that's great, but you're not ahead of her. So you got the same rank as her, so you're not going to get paid off of her. Megan, do you understand what she's saying? Can you hear her? Yes, I can hear her. That makes sense. Okay, so their numbers do count. And the only way that you wouldn't just promote up with them is if you didn't have your 500 in or you didn't have the active front line. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your, what's your team? If they're a superstar and your, your next step is to get that 10, so then you bonus off of them again. So you need to get up to director. And then even if they hit director, once you hit director, it doesn't matter because... You're, yeah, so at director level, it's completely different. And at that point, if you're a director and they rank up to director, you will always make 3% off of their TWV from that point on. Even if they rank above you and go to star director before you, at the director level and above, you still make a percentage of their TWV. It's okay. just SSC and under that you do not. And so if you have a star consultant... And, or if you're a star consultant, you have a lead consultant under you that's promoting up to star. What it, you're both star, then you do not make anything off of her TWV. Yes. So you're an and it wouldn't necessarily push you up to superstar because her TWV and your TWV together might yeah, not be done. six thousand. Right. Got right. it. Okay. Yep. That should explain it. Thank you so much for answering. I appreciate oh, it. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. Does that, did that help? Because I know I was probably confusing you a little bit. Did that help, ladies? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. That helped. Yeah, okay. that helped. Yes, ma'am. Hang on, I'm texting Stephanie back because she called me six, like six times. All right, so now that we broke that down, so it does still count. 
So it's just, if they get ahead of you, like even with their numbers, like it's, you might be able to get to where they are, but you're not going to be able to get back ahead of them until you rank up to director. Right. So if Timmy A has a TWV of 2,500, but you only have your 500 and your other Timmy has 200. So you have 700 PRV, which is not even going to like, that's hardly any GWV. I can't even, I'm not going to mask minus the 25%. You're not going to hit that 6,000 to push up to superstar. You're going to stay where you're at. If to this Timmy over here, if Timmy A promotes up to superstar, is paid a title, has 6,000 GWV, and you have two other teamies that are at least active and you have 500 in, you're going to promote up to superstar consultant as well, but you're still not going to get paid off of them off of that branch, off of Timmy A's branch, because you're still the same. That's why you keep building around it. And then you can promote up to director. Once you're a director, like she stated, you, it doesn't matter. You're, you're the person beside you. Timmy A can promote to director. Timmy F way down can promote to director. You're in, it doesn't matter. It does not matter once you're a director. However, a director is the only title that you can lose. And how you lose your title is if you're a director, and I believe it's four months, after four months of not being paid at title, you go into director queue. If you don't hit paid at title in those three months, then you drop back down to superstar consultant. Because it's like considered a big time like leadership role. So you need to be doing, you know, all of the things and leading the way. And I guess they look at it like if you're not, like if you aren't paid at title, then you're not leading the way. But lots of people lose their title of director and they work their way back up. They keep growing and they get their title back. So say in that four months, you don't get paid at title. The first month in the queue, you get paid at title. You go back into being a regular director or whatever. And then you have four months to hit paid at title again. So, I mean, it's not like you lose your title like that. You know what I mean? But you can lose it. It's not the end of the world if it happens. Um, I believe in growing organically that way it doesn't. So I was terrified to promote to director because I was super scared. We were only a team of 13 when I promoted a director and I was like, holy smokes, I'm never going to be able to keep up with this. I couldn't even stay paid at title as a superstar consultant. Like I literally could not stay paid at title as a superstar consultant. It was like, I was paid at title when I promoted, I wasn't for like the next three months. Then there was one month where I was paid at title and then I wasn't again. And then was it for like several months, was paid at title. Then I wasn't for like a month or two. Like it was like nuts. And then the month before I promoted a director, we were not paid at title as a superstar consultant team. So it's okay. Also the team that gets you to your current level probably isn't going to be the team that keeps you there. So the team that got me to director, most of them are not doing it anymore. Okay. The team that got me to director may only just be hobbyists now. You know what I mean? Like you just, that's why you always want to keep just doing, doing what you do. You know, this isn't for everybody. A lot, I've had a lot of people join and think that it's just easy money and it's not. Nothing in life is easy. However, if you work at it, I can, I will show you my paychecks if you would like, or JC is very fluent in showing hers, like it's fine. You can make real money, but not everybody can. So my husband and I was talking about it earlier, not to get completely squirreled. And he was like, you know, I was talking about people how they give direct sales a bad rap because they don't make money. And he said, he, he said, um, you can use a hammer the right way, or you can use a hammer the wrong way, but it's not the hammer's fault. You, and he said, I'm going to, this is on YouTube. He said, if you hit yourself in the with the hammer, it's not the hammer's fault. You hit yourself or, or you hit the nail in, it's not the hammer's fault. It's the person using it, right? And I really like that analogy. Maybe I was just slap happy because I haven't slept much in a few days. But regardless, you just got to stick with it. When you get in this business, at least with Sensi, I don't know any other direct sales. I've never done any other direct sales. If Sensi didn't work out, I'm not doing any other direct sales. But with the way ours is structured, you do not just get to get to the top and coast, you still need to be recruiting because that's where that little thing called TWV comes in. So you'll see on your home screen when you log into workstation, there's three zeros, right? 
or three zeros, three circles. One's your PRV, one says GWV, and one says TWV. So I'm going to talk about the promotion to star director, which is a rank above me. So when you promote a director under you, which I know you guys aren't there yet, but I'm telling you it can happen like that when you least expect it. So I'm going to talk about it. When you get to director and you promote a director under you, your GWV and TWV then split because that director, their number went with them. They're still part of your group. GWV is your group wholesale volume. They are still part of that, but now they are their own independent team. So when they're a director, they don't see, like I wouldn't see their downlines numbers and all of that in my like top 50 stuff and all of that. Like Marcella isn't seeing all of you guys' stuff because you're my team, okay? So the TWV is my team without that director. So for star director, you have to have two directors under you that are paid at title, which means they are doing the 10,000 GWV. They have three active frontline. I believe it's three, maybe four. And they have their 500 minimum in on their own. So 10,000 GWV, you have to have two of them, two directors. Then on your own, without them, you have to have your 500 in, plus your team has to do 2,000 GWV. No. Yes. Yes. 2,000 TWV. Yeah. TWV, your team. Or... Yeah, no, you're right. You're, you have to do 2,000 TWV. And but Marcella is a star director now, and she has so maybe it's to be paid off of your directors. So to be like to paid off of your directors because Marce or Marcella is a star director, and she has to have her five hundred in. Her team has to do six thousand, and her GWV has to be thirty thousand to be paid at title at star. But if you think about it, thirty thousand. Oh my God, that's a lot. Not really, because you as a director should be doing ten thousand. Each of the two directors under you should be doing 10,000. That's your 30,000, okay? And I haven't went as far up to look at SSD because I'm not there yet. Um, but so you still get paid off of your directors, but you have to have your 2K in. That's what it was. Marcella to get paid off of me had to have 2K on her own because she had a director under her. Right now, my GWV and my TWV are the same. So it says 2,000 above my TWV ring and then 10,000 above my GWV ring. Let me just show you. I don't really like putting my- So I don't have- so. So Okay, I don't because have... I'm a director, I have a PRV ring, a TWV ring, and a GWV ring, okay? See how there's a two? Can you see 2,000 above TW and 10,000 above GW? That's because if I had a director under me, I would, their numbers are gonna branch and still count for my GWV, but I have to have 2000 on my own. Right now, the numbers are the same, okay? So it's fine. Right now we have enough GWV to technically have a director under us. We have 22,784 GWV as my team, like, but it's all my people. Like I don't have a director under me where the teams broke off. So it's my TWV and my GWV. Okay, so that's where when we get when you get closer, we will break all of that shit down. But I promise it's not as confusing. It's just like trying to do it over a freaking computer makes it a little bit difficult. So now I'm going to talk about now that I've talked about how to promote the importance of staying above your team. I always preach this and I'm going to preach it and preach it and preach it. You should be a damn trying to recruit two a month and do 2000 PRV, two by two every month in your team is going to blow up. First of all, who can tell me the perk of doing 2000 PRV in a single month? What is an it? extra 5% on your paycheck? Which is an extra hundred dollars. You do 2K, I don't care if you don't have a single team, your paycheck is $600. That's a lot of freaking money to me. Is an extra 600 bucks? Yes, please. That is why you want to strive for 2K every single month. 2K, recruiting two a month, and your, your business is going to explode. 
I'm not even kidding. Sometimes one, some months I won't do any. And then the next month I'll have three and then I won't have any. And then I'll do four and then I won't have any and I'll do one. But you always need to be doing it all because I'm telling you people fall off. I'm telling you that people recruit up and then you have to have that active front line. So Marcella was talking with us. Once again, Marcella, if you're watching, I'm really, really sorry, but it's a good educational point. She was really worried when she promoted her next director up that she wasn't going to have the active front line because her team grew real long. She was kind of like teeny, uh, like this map, right? Which is like I told you, I leveled up to her same level because she was a hobbyist for a really long time. So she didn't, wasn't in the mindset of recruiting. So her teams grew real long, but they didn't grow wide. So they grew deep, which is really important, but they didn't grow wide. And you have to have that active front line to be paid at title. So now I want to break down why you want to be paid at title. You are always, 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 and I've said this before. So if I've already said it to you, I'm just sticking true to my word. You are always going to make the most money off of your personal sales. Your own sales are where you're going to make the most money. Well, then why promote? right? Well, why go through all of this of getting teamies, having to lead these teamies, having to be a leader? Because if God forbid, if you are going to recruit somebody, you need to be taking care of them. It is not your director's responsibility, your superstar director's responsibility, your star directors, your sponsors. It's not. It's your own, okay? So why go through that? I'm going to tell you why. So at a lead consultant. Now, this is if you don't have anybody under you that's like passing you or the same level. It's not any of that. This is just because you're not going to get paid off of them if so. This is if that situation is not happening. So a lead consultant. So in your little book here, you go to lead consultant. You got to have 500 in, 1,000 GWV and one active frontline. I didn't realize it, but it says all of that right here. Okay. So off of... When you're a lead consultant, you make 25% off of your PRV. You also are going to make a bonus 2% on your own sales if you're paid at title. And you're going to make 2% off of your essentials and certifieds that join. So if you are a lead consultant, and you have a teamy under you or two teamies under you, you'll make 2% off of their sales as long as you're paid at title of lead. And you're gonna make now, so that 25%, you're gonna make 27%. And I know it seems like a little bit, but every little bit counts, keep with me. Do 2K that month and you're gonna make 30% plus that two for being paid at title at lead. Now you're making 32% off of your own sales 2% off of your team. Okay. Keep going. Star consultant, 500 PRV, 2,500 GWV, two active frontline. You're going to make 25% off of your own sales. If you're paid a title, you get a bonus 4% on your own sales. Plus you're going to make 4% off of all essential and all certified. Essential is somebody who joined and hasn't done a thousand lifetime PRV yet. And they are going to make you make 4% off of your essentials and your certifieds, meaning they've hit their thousand lifetime PRV, but they haven't recruited anybody yet. And then you're going to also make 2% off of your leads. This is only your frontline. If you did not personally sponsor them, this, that doesn't matter. You're not getting like your paycheck isn't on just their numbers. You're getting paid off of the GWV of your front line. You are getting paid off of the GWV of your front line. So Shelby. I'm not making money directly off of you. I'm making, she, what is she? She's a star consultant. So I'm making 5% off of Kylie's GWV. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's not directly off of you. It's off Kylie's whole, I'm making 5% off Kylie's whole entire team. Jennifer, I'm making 5% off of um, Teresa's whole team. Megan? I am making 5% off of you and your whole team. Like you're at that GWV because I am your personal sponsor, Megan. Okay. 
So then, so that means off of your own personal sales, a star consultant, if you do 2K PRB, you are going to make 30% plus a bonus 4%. You're making 34% off of your own sales. Okay. Then go up to superstar consultant, 500 PRV, 6,000 GWV, three active front line. You're going to make 25% of your own PRV. You're going to make 7% bonus on your own PRV if you are paid at title. You're going to make 7% off of your consult uh, certified and essential consultants. You're going to make 5% off of your lead consultants and 3% off of your star consultants. Okay, so do 2K in a month. You're now going to make what I say. So that would be 30. You're going to make 37% off of your own sales as a superstar consultant if you're paid at title, if you have 2K in. Okay, director, 500 PRV, 10,000 GWV, 2,000 TWV, and three active frontline, 25% of off of your own personal sales, a 9% bonus off of your own personal sales, a 9% off of a certified and essential consultants, that is your frontline, 7% off of leads, 5% off stars, 2% off superstars. And I, if I get a director under me, I'd make 3% off of theirs. Now, why in the world would I want my teamies to promote up if it's a less percentage for each rank? Well, this is why. I'm not getting paid off of their, own, their, their GWV by themselves. So if they are doing their business correctly and they are getting paid at title, that GWV that I'm making that 5% off of is going to be more than the 7% if they were essential or certified. So it does balance out. Not to mention we are not in this to just, oh, me, 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 me. You want them to do well because you want them to do well. It's not just about, I mean, come on guys, we're talking about 5%. So this month, for example, my sales, my own personal sales are over four grand. It's like 4,026. I'm not good at math, but I, that means I'm going to be making 39% of four grand. How much is that? Megan, are you, you're good at math. What's 39% of 4,000? We'll just keep it even. She 1560. 1560. So not off my team, just off myself, I'm making $1,560. You see why it's important to have your numbers in check? to make sure that you are doing sales. 4,000 may seem like ungodly amount right now, but I've only been doing this since February of 2019. And if I can do it, I promise you can. It's just, if there's a will, there's a way. You gotta be ready to hustle. I do this working full-time out of the house. I do this with three kids, two are special needs in therapy. I mean, I got all the excuses in the world if I wanted to use them. So 1560, what, what would 1560 do for you? I mean, because it does a lot for me. That's some life-changing type shit for me. That's not including the 9% I'm going to make off my certified and lead consultants. That's not including the 7% I'm going to make off my lead consultants, the 5% off my star consultants. I don't have any superstars yet or directors yet. So that's not including any of their numbers. And when you think about 5%, it adds up. So I'll make, I make the, I'll make 50 bucks off Megan. Maybe I'll make 20 bucks off Jen. Maybe I'll make 15 bucks off of, you know, the next person. It's not a lot, but we're a team of 78. So if you take 20 bucks here, 10 bucks here, it does add up, right? I have not reached that threshold where I'm making more money off my team than I am off myself. Some people want you, you know, I guess that can happen. Um, but I make, I make the most money off of my own personal sales. So I wanted to tell you that's why it is important to promote is because it's not that you're going to make a crap ton of money off of your team, but you're going to make that bonus money off of your, your own personal sales, which is freaking amazing. Um, and that's also why it's really important 
to not just grow down, you need to grow wide because you're going to make a percentage off of each one of their GWVs. You know, you want to have as many frontline as you possibly can. I want to say that I have 28 frontline that I have personally sponsored. We are a team of 78. And let me just see something because I know some of you get a little bit upset and get discouraged because you don't have active frontline. So I'm going to tell you out of a team of 78, let me make sure it's 78. Out of a team of 78, dun, 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 out of a team of 78, we have 33 that is active. Who can tell me what percentage that is? And this is the most I've ever seen active on the team. These aren't just my front line. I only have 15 active front line, but in the whole entire team, 33 of them are active. Normally that doesn't happen. There's normally not more than like 15 that are active, period, on the whole entire team. So if you have teamies that aren't active, don't beat yourself up about it. Keep recruiting. This isn't for everybody. But all it takes is one person to change your business. And I was that one person for Marcella. Not kidding. She'll tell you. I was the one that changed it for her. She was with Cincy for like six years. Before I joined, she was just a hobbyist. She didn't take it serious. I joined. I started having fun. We were having fun together. And then there it went. And now she's a freaking star director. And she's, I would bet she'll be a superstar director by December. So who has questions? I have two Did things. All... Okay, let's hear it. So off my team alone, you actually make $150. Ouch. Okay. So that's a little bit more, but not like some and not, not more than what you're making, but still, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that number really would add up really quick. If you think about it, you but made 150 bucks off of consultants. every star. I have four. Right, so that's what I'm consultants. saying. So if you made a hundred Hang on, but I don't so make made 150 bucks off of all the, but I'm not making that 5% either. Like I make 5%, like, okay, for example, I have one star consultant. I'm not going to say who that has 160 PRV in, and her group is 500, like 500 GWV. Okay. One right. of my star consultants, my, I'm making 5% of $500. But let's just say that all of your stars did work, then that 150 then, yeah, bucks money would add up quickly. Up. Right. Yeah. So it is like a perk of having and teamies go absolutely. up, right? Absolutely. Okay. And this month we almost have 50%. It's like 42% of the team is active, which is which never happens. crazy. Yeah, that never happens. Let me take a look at last month. No, I'm not saying that I don't make any money off of like my team. No, no, no. I'm just saying that I make more money off of my own personal sales. And I say this because I don't want people to think, hey, I only want people to do well because I'm going to make money off of them. It's really small in the grand scheme. Does that, do you see what I'm saying? Like, no, I wasn't saying that you're making like that. That's what you were trying to say. I'm saying that it, the more that you get people to do okay. better, right? So like the better that we all do, the more money we all make. And it does benefit you Absolutely. for your consultants to promote because then they're getting more teammates, their GWVs higher, Absolutely. they're making more money. You're then in turn making more money. So exactly. no, it's not like a crazy amount of money, but it's still... Which would is help why when me if I had, somebody. you know what I mean? Yeah, which is why when you recruit somebody, you should be absolutely taking care of them. If they are your frontline, you, now I'm not saying you give them your undivided attention 24 seven, but I'm saying you should be training them because you are getting paid to do so. Does that, you know what I mean? Like, that's why I do what I, like I give back. Because, not, I would probably give back even if I didn't get paid, but I mean, that's your duty as a leader and you can actually lose your, like director title, if you, they can prove that you don't. So, yes. Let's look at last month. Last month, we had 19 active on the whole entire team. Let's go back another month. The month before that, we had 20. So you can see it's fall. 
So there's more active, but that's not here nor there. But yeah, I mean, Megan, you did the math. You know, if you, I, I'm going to trust that you're right on that 150. I have no idea. Um, but I, there's also a, like, there's something about it because you're not being paid at tight, like you're not paid at title. So that affects it too. Right? You see what I'm saying? I think she can't hear me. I don't know. But does anybody, did I answer your question? I right can now? hear you. I'm sorry. I'm giving Kelly a bath. No, no, you did. It wasn't even a question. I was just saying like, you know, basically in general, you want your team to grow. You want your teammates' teams to grow. Absolutely. Because everybody benefits in the long run. Even if it is everybody. a small number, an extra everybody. $150 on my paycheck would mean a lot to me. Great. Right. Yes. So absolutely. And an extra $150 for, for my teamies would mean a lot to them too. You know what I'm saying? So that yep. was all. That was all. No, absolutely. I completely agree with you there. Um, yeah. I mean, that is life changing. You know what I mean? Like I have just now got to the point when we're now that we're a team of 78 that I'm making like decent money off of my team as well as to where before it was like really heavy on just mine and I haven't made it where they match yet. I still make more off of just myself, but we're, we're teetering that. And so, I mean, that takes time. Um, Jennifer, Shelby, do either of you have any questions on what I said or any comments or, you know, anything at all? I know that both of you have been recruiting. So do you, I mean, do you have anything about leadership about what you should be doing with training? Well, as far as uh, the leadership part, when it go, when it comes to my front line and everything, just mm -hmm. everything that I learn, uh, if I don't absorb it, I write it down, sometimes both. I'm passing everything on. Um, mm -hmm. What uh, they have for suggestions and everything, uh, what's working for them, you know, we bounce things off of each other. If uh, it's not working, we try to figure out for uh, the one that's not working for what they can do different. Um, now, as far as like the Zoom meetings and everything, I have uh, talked to uh, my two front line I have right now, and I'm going to have two more coming. Um, it, it's but very important. You're not really doing your own Zooms yet. I think it's still a little no, bit early. Oh, no, absolutely no. I'm talking about the Monday night moves and, you know, like the Wednesday nights with you. Mm -hmm. I am in no way, shape, or form, you know, ready uh, to be able to do a Zoom I just know myself. That it can be a lot in the beginning, you know, but I, I think that, yes. you know, you guys bouncing ideas off of each other is really, really good. Mm -hmm. The only suggestion oh, yeah. that I have, and I'm not saying this at you at all, I'm saying this to anybody, mm -hmm. um, is don't ever ask your team to do something that you're not doing. So exactly, that's a really, yeah. really big one. Um, I know several people who have like learned something and set, and then just kind of like blurted mm -hmm. it to their team, but then their team never seen them doing it. Anything exactly. that I've ever told my team or another person on like another team, I've guess spoke on other teams, anything that mm -hmm. I say, or I'm talking about is because I have direct experience with it. Now, does that mean what I do isn't going to work for you? like, or is going to work for you? Not necessarily, mm -hmm. but I would never ask you to do something that I'm not doing. I might say, Hey, I know somebody else who's doing this and it really worked. Um, if you wanted to give it a try. Um, right. And I always tell them, uh, no matter what it is to put their personal spin on it, absolutely. they're the ones it's their business. They need to work their business with themselves not, you know, reciting and doing uh, everything, particularly the way somebody else is doing. They right. can take the idea, but they've got to make it their own. Yeah. And as far as I totally agree with you about uh, not asking them to do something that I'm not doing. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in healthcare for 27 years. I've been a nurse for 16 of those years. And I, I just love it when some of them, uh, when some of the workers will come up to me and say, well, you know, you wouldn't do that. Well, guess what? I did it for 11 years before I did this. <laughs> so, you know, I've been there. Um, I will never ask anybody to do something I'm not willing to do myself. Yeah. 
as a leader, they always say lead the way. So you can't oh, yeah. I can never come and tell you guys that you should have, like, as a leader, you need to have, like, really truthfully, as a leader, I'm going to tell you, you should have 500 mm-hmm. in by the 15th. No questions asked. Right. You have 500 mm-hmm. in by the 15th. I'm not, a lot of other leaders will be like, they'll kind of truth bomb you. And I get really like, I don't want to be mean, but really as a leader, you should have 500 in by the 15th. They say rule of thumb is the first 15 days, you should focus on your business, getting you where you need to be. And that is minimum 500 minimum. Right. And then, mm-hmm. then start worrying about your team. I do Wednesdays for my team all month long, but a lot of leaders won't even like answer their teamies or anything for the first 15 days. They're getting right. their stuff in check first. So you right. should definitely have your 500 in by the 15th. Um, yeah. Not getting so, oh. because you don't have your 500 in is like mind blowing to me. Like I've seen it happen. So right. keep that in mind. So okay. I just want to tell you from personal experience, I have waited until after the 15th to get my 500 in. And it's like, scrambling I mean it's maybe only happened once literally the entire time that I've been with Cynthia but regardless or since I've had a team let's just say but it was the worst feeling feeling like oh my gosh I actually have two active people this month and I don't even have my 500 in do you know what I mean it's like then all of a sudden you feel like you're scrambling and you're trying to fit in all these parties and you're trying to do all the things and then you have no time for all the other things that you should be focusing on yep that's all for sure I definitely, definitely agree there. Um, yeah. So what Shelby, uh, Jen, I'm going to put you guys on the spot for a little bit. Um, what are you doing to train your new teamies? Okay. We have a message, uh, my teamies, and I even have uh, the uh, front line for Jen as well. She's not my front line, Becky, but she's on there. Um, it, I feel like it's my responsibility to kind of check, you know, everybody that's on this team, including myself, we're new. Yep. So, uh, yeah, you guys yep. are and with me, together. right, right. And with me being uh, kind of top tier right now, you know, I feel like it's my responsibility to make sure they understand some of the things that I see that they're not getting right you know if it's a compliance issue something like that and I tell every one of them invite me to your page not not their party pages or anything they do not have to Mm -hmm. do that just right right and just like I talked to Jen and she's like you know well I I was kind of thinking it would be if I invited somebody else to my page like Teresa um that she would kind of be uh looking at me basically like scrutinizing scrutinizing and I told her I said no absolutely not honey I said and another thing too I said I'm on Teresa's page I said that's another thing I talked to Teresa to ask if I could add my front line to her page that way no (laughs) okay (laughs) well at that time I was not doing lives Things she like may that. let you, but I, I yeah. do not have a single consultant on my team page. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're on my All VIP right. page. Yeah, your VIP. I'll tell you that when I first started, um, I was having mm-hmm. success. I had let all my teamies on there. And would you not know that I got turned into compliance six times mm-hmm. and every time compliance investigated and realized I didn't do anything wrong. But when you have real, like when you're getting success, you'd be surprised how many people will want to try to drag you so back. From I will it. let new teamies on my team page for um, their first 15 days so they can see how I mm-hmm. do. Things, and then they will be removed. Okay. All now right. well, that makes I'm total on sense. Some of theirs, yeah. Like I'm mm-hmm. on Megan's um, and I would never turn, but you're not going to turn your downline in. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. I'm on them just to kind of maybe give them some interaction, things like that. But no, they're not on mine. Exactly. Yeah. Well, what that, that's what I do for these guys. And then I also have uh, the Facebook message that we're all on as well. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a look. Yeah. We'll take little pictures of, you know, things that we've done. Um, if Jared, one of us needs to, you know, where it's, it's a community. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, uh-huh. I definitely share Absolutely. that stuff on the team page as well. But the group message, mm-hmm. I think Megan has one of those as well for her team. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Yeah. Well, that's about it between that and, you know, I reach out to each one of them individually instead yeah. of as a group to see any of their concerns and kind of like a, one of the comments that was uh, on the uh, Monday night moves from one of uh, my frontline uh, immediately, you know, I uh, messaged her and I've spoken with her and everything is fine. Um, she was just really stressed out. She goes through a bunch of conference calls during the daytime. Um, I do not tell them. I expect you to get X amount uh, for your PRV. Uh, but once I see what they have, and we've discussed uh, different things coming up, what we want to do, I do issue them personal challenges. The first yeah. time that I've done that was this month. Uh, and that uh, was a big thing for me to try to let them uh, get more opportunity, more experience, and to build their own confidence because yeah. this is the perfect yeah. time of year for them to make that PRV. And they're gonna have more interactions with people, yeah, and see what's working. Fun. Yeah, that's really, really that's good. about it. What about yeah. you, Shelby? What are you doing to train your two new teenies? So I personally know both of mine. One's my best friend, and then the other one is her aunt. Uh, uh, we are in a group message on Facebook, kind of like, uh, cause right now is like a really crazy time with the new warmer of the month. That's a lot of people are like really wanting. And then the holiday collection, um, a lot of things is going on and they kind of join in at the tail end of the month. So everything's all new and they don't know a lot of things that's going on. And I want them to have a successful first month being a consultant. So I've been just telling them like, uh, giving them ideas of what to do next month that helped me um, gain PRV. Like I did the fall bags um, in August and they were really successful for me. Um, just letting them know that everything's dropping like, at 3 a.m. just stuff like that so they're aware I told them a lot of things will be on our team page on Facebook but um uh both of them work second shift so they sleep throughout the day so um I just want them to have everything they can right now to be successful because I mean I don't really talk to Kylie a lot I maybe talk to her maybe once every other month. So um, I want them to know that I'm around and I can help them as much as I can because I'm still learning. And when I learn new things, I want them to know as well. So they're not behind, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I completely get that. And I love the open communication. Um, and it's so much easier, especially when you know you have a team of 10 or less um, to be able to do like a group messenger. I had one when I first started before I had my own team page, I had my own group message. And then when I was a superstar consultant, I went ahead and I, I wanted to branch off on my own, um, hindsight. I wish I wouldn't have, I wish I would have stayed at least until I was a director, um, because you still have to add everybody to the director page. So then they were seeing the same stuff kind of, um, in two pages. Um, but I did the director or I did the group chat until we were like a team of like 15. And then it just kind of became like, it became too much. So then I tried like making it to where like they could just, I had individual conversations. That was too much once I reached a certain point, you know, and then so it will have to be tweaked as your teams grow. So they say, don't do for one what you can't do for 10,000. Um, go ahead and break, make it like logical. Don't do for one what you can't do for 500. I mean, at that point, that is like a logical, like you can actually grasp it. Because um, I will say I started off doing team mail when I first joined. I had like two teamies. So like I spoiled the crap out of them, right? And now that that's what they're accustomed to. And then now that I'm like, you know, I mean, we have, so I would, then I like, I'd used to do top 10 and then that hurt some people's feelings because they didn't make top 10 and I, they felt like I'm that top 10 was making it a competition. So then I changed it and I went a different route and then I did, I was like, okay, I'll do 1k club, 2k club, 500 club, active club. Well, I mean, this month alone, we have 14 people over a thousand, like good night, you know, and it's kind of like, holy smokes. So 
just be mindful of that. Like as you grow, don't set really high expectations. Like to where people can message you all the time. Cause I promise you're going to get super, super burnt out. If it's your best friends already, or you're a group of two. Um, I mean, it's a little different, but as you grow, because you're going to grow, that's going to get harder. I mean, I will say that one of the hardest people to train is your best friend is your family because you can't, um, you just want to shake them. Like sometimes I'll have to be like, Megan, you can do it. Stop it. You know? And I think that, I mean, Megan, you, you've signed up your best friend. Do you think it's easier to train your best friend or you think it's easier to train, um, somebody who is not your best friend or have you had somebody that, um, me personally, I think it's been easier to train my, my best friends. Both of my best friends have joined, but here is why I talk to them pretty regularly anyway, right? We already have a connection. I already have a relationship with them. And I, when you shake me and you tell me like, Megan, get your shit together. I'm like, damn, Kirsty really needs that shit right now. Like last night when I told you I wasn't going to make that damn Google form because I wasn't having it. And you were like, do it. I was like, okay, she's serious. Let me just make this damn Google form, right? But like when it's other people, I feel um, like I'm never going to shake anybody else to do anything. Even if I know they can do it and I know they can do it well, I'm not going to, that's just not who I am, right? Like I don't like confrontation. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I want everybody to just be happy and Cynthia land with me, okay? The other thing is, is that some of the people that have joined my team I don't have, I do have a lot of like close people with that I can have conversations with, but then I have a few that I don't. And when I'm reaching out and trying to have conversation, it's like, you almost have to build that relationship in order to kind of be able to, I feel like for me personally, it would be able, it's easier for me to sponsor them and mentor them and help them succeed when I'm able to have some sort of like friendship or relationship with them you know what I mean? Then I know where they're at where, versus like reaching out, you know, and asking them how they're doing. And they just say, fine. You know but what I mean? Imagine, I think w- w- I completely agree with that. Com- like 100. Like, I think it's way easier. Like Megan, you're my sister. It was way easier for me to talk you through Sensi than Shelby or Jennifer. One, you guys aren't my, like my directs. I didn't sponsor you. And two, like, I've never met either of you in person, but I will say, Shelby or Jen, if you guys messaged me at 1 30 in the morning, I'm probably going to be like, I'm not even looking at this. Megan, you messaged me at 1 30 in the morning. I'm going to be like, damn it, Megan. Okay. What? You know what I mean? Like, I do feel like that you, you put yourself out there a little bit more when it's a family member, um, as far, because you do talk all the time. Right. So they feel like that line of communication is there all the time, which is great. But if you have 78 people who feel like they're your line of communication all the time, do you see how that could be a problem? Yes, I do. Like you see, yeah, for sure. There, you got to have those, uh, those, those boundaries. Um, I'm not, I've also been very fortunate enough that when they ask me questions that I don't answer right away, they go and look themselves. And I would say nine times out of 10, they text me back and say, never mind, I figured it out which is awesome. So which is why they yeah. actually teach us as directors to not answer a question for 24 to 48 hours. They literally teach us that. And I'm going to tell you this little motto before I, I let you guys go. If you don't have more questions, they say, write this down because it's the best thing ever. Literally girls write this down. It's so good. Sorry. Go ahead. You want to teach not only your team, but your kids, your spouse, everybody, you want to teach them how to fish. And I'm going to tell you why you give somebody a fish one time and they eat right then. But if you teach somebody how to fish, they'll eat for the rest of their life. So for example, that can work for literally everything under the sun, but with Sensi, if they, hi, sweetheart. So let's go with you someone has a question on something with workstation. It's a lot of times because workstation can be a little bit confusing. It's easier just to find the answer and tell them, right? Right. But then they only know the answer to that one question. So they're gonna come to you for every question, which means you fed them once. If you teach them how to find the answer in workstation, 
they're going to be able to always find the answers in workstation with exceptions because workstation is a little bit difficult but you teach somebody you know you give them one post of how to get prv they're going to get prv that one time if you teach them how to do posts for prv they'll be able to get prv you know all the time so you don't want to give somebody the fish you want to teach them how to fish any questions no questions but that was very very good <laughs> i wholeheartedly agree with that and um with each and every new uh frontline member that i get i want them to be confident in uh, their skills and as far as everything that they're learning that when it comes time for them to recruit that they're going to be passing the same things along to them that i passed to them in okay. turn so yep and you also, also every single person learns differently. So exactly. ask how somebody learns. Um, I've never done that with Shelby. I've never done that with Jen. I do ask my frontline. Um, I haven't asked my downline, but ask them how they learn. Do you learn by silly pictures? Do you need it yes. written out? Do you need it in a verbal, like you need it in a video? Like, how, you know, find out how your people learn because even in school, you know, you had kids that failed in school because they didn't learn the way that they were being taught. So find out how they're taught and there might that might bust that barrier a little bit too. Like, you know, how do you want me to reach out to you? How do, are you somebody who, you know, needs Atta girls? Do you need an Atta girl? I'm a, I'm a queen Atta girl, but like some people don't care about that stuff. Some people really do and it helps motivate them. Are you somebody who learned like needs challenges to push yourself? Do you like the top 10 so that you can try to get to it? I mean, learning all of that stuff about somebody is really nice. It's just really hard to do with everybody, like learning every little person's little quirks, but I'm really, really trying to get better. We're all trying to get better. We, you know, I, don't like to be the smartest person in the room that's why we do like that monday moves because all of us learn from each other and all of us bring different things to the table on monday nights and i think it's nice seeing you know my outlook on things versus jc's versus marcella's versus donna's versus jessica's i mean it's i think that it's really <clears throat> really neat and they say if you're the smartest person in the room then you need to find a new room so yeah that's all i have so if you guys don't have any questions, I'll let you go. Thank you so much for coming. I hope that you learned something. I hope the compensation plan is a little bit less scary. Um, and there is a, um, once you guys start uh, getting familiar with this, I can show you the compensation calculator and you can get an estimate on what your paycheck will be. So that's always kind of fun. I'm always off by like $100 <laughs> or a little more, you know, it's never dead on, but I get close. So there's that, but me and math, we're not friends. <laughs> so if you don't have any questions, I'm going to let you go. Thank you. No problem. Thanks. Thank you all so much for.